Hi everybody, uh, this is Steve Ruffner here, and I just want to welcome you and thank you for hitting play on this little video clip. Um, something that the other elders and I will be doing at least once a week as we are approaching the book of Romans. And so hopefully these video clips will help aid in your study of the book of Romans. So whether you are watching it on your own or whether you're watching it with your one another group, uh, I just want to thank you for joining in. And, and if you haven't joined one another group, I really want to encourage you uh, to do that. I really do think that being a part of those groups will not just help us as a church get to know each other uh, and to move forward with mission, um, but it will help us uh, in studying God's word and applying it to ourselves uh, really well. So if you're not in a one another group, please feel free to contact me, uh, text me, send me an email, uh, and we'll try and get you connected uh, to one that fits the time that you're available. Uh, tonight, I want to talk to you just a little bit about Romans uh, 1, uh, verses 8 through 15. And this is the third sermon that we're doing in our Roman study. So the first one a few weeks ago, Greg gave us uh, a background and overview of the book. Um, and then last week, uh, he gave us uh, a sermon on verses 1 through 7 of chapter 1, where Paul gives his introduction, where he identifies himself and gives his credentials of being uh, an apostle and really talks about uh, this good news uh, that um, is for the church, and not just for the church uh, there in Rome, but for the church um, uh, even today. So... Um, so whether you're watching this after the sermon has been preached, which uh, for just the sake of uh, dates is September 18th, so you may be watching it before the sermon's preached or you may be watching it afterwards. Um, so this could be just so you know what to expect on Sunday or it may be a bit of review for you. Uh, but in this section, uh, verses 8 through 15 of chapter 1, it really is Paul giving a portrait of, of what obedient faith looks like. And you could approach this section from a couple different ways. Uh, it could be just from looking at Paul's prayer, uh, because in it you'll see that Paul is praying for uh, the church there at Rome. And he talks about how he longs to see them, and, he, and he's excited about their faith, uh, their faith that is known throughout the entire world. Um, uh, so you could approach it from the angle of his prayers, or you could approach it from looking at the faith of the people that he's talking about. Uh, because this section really is a little bit of an extension of his introduction, where before he was talking about his credentials, now he's talking about to the people there in Rome. Um, uh, most of the people don't know him. He only knows a handful of people. And so he's really saying what it is about them uh, that would ingratiate them to him and him to them. Um, and so this is really, like I said, the portrait of obedient faith. Um, and I call this a named faith. The named is just an acronym for a couple different ways that their faith is being displayed. Uh, the first one is that it's a notorious faith. It's known throughout the world. So that's the N in named. It's also an attractive faith um, that Paul really wanted to be with him. There was something special about him that made him want to go visit them. Uh, and he's tried multiple times, it says there. Um, but he wants to be with them. Their faith also is mutually encouraging. And um, that not only is he hoping to impart something to them, but he knows that he's going to be able to get something from them. And that's something that we as a church should understand, is that our faith is meant to be mutually encouraging, that we don't come on a Sunday morning uh, just to get something for us. Uh, hopefully that's not the reason you come on a Sunday morning. Hopefully you come so that not only maybe you get encouraged by somebody else, but that you can be an encouragement to another person, that, that we all need each other. Um, and it's a mutual way that we interact as the body of Christ. So there's notorious, there's attractive, there's mutually encouraging, and then the D in named is that it's duty-bound, that 
the love of Christ compels us uh, to interact with one another in a way that uh, helps each other grow and, and in, in a way that uh, our faith uh, can be known all around the world. So uh, hopefully that will give you a few things to think about uh, as you look at this passage, a few things to discuss uh, in your small group. Um, and if the points in the sermon weren't enough to kind of get your discussion juices going, I uh, hear a couple things that you could probably think about um, to spur on some of that discussion. But uh, maybe you can share with each other a story of someone that you know or someone that you've seen who has demonstrated or who demonstrates actively an obedient faith. Uh, so discuss that. Who do you know who demonstrates an obedient faith? Or you could brainstorm some ways that you could be mutually encouraging to one another. Or maybe one other thing you could do is kind of discuss the the side of it of discuss Paul's prayers. You know, what makes them unique and special um, and a model for us as we pray. So hopefully that'll set you going in the right direction as you discuss these things or, or spend some time meditating on this passage and uh, we really look forward to interacting with you further uh, as we go throughout the rest of the book of Romans. So God bless you.